I'm Andrea Houston for Extra, and today I'm sitting down with Frank Mugisha, Executive Director of Sexual Minorities of Uganda. Frank has been a leader in the fight against the anti-homosexuality bill. Hi, Frank. Thanks so much Hi. for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Um, maybe you want to bring uh, my readers up to speed and what, what has been happening with the bill. Where is it at right now? As we speak, the bill is still in the Committee of Parliament. But uh, recently, the Speaker has, of course, expressed interest to bring up this legislation uh, for debate on the floor of Parliament. And she hasn't uh, been able to do it. But the bill has appeared on the order paper of business to follow, which means it could come up any time. Yeah. yeah. So that is where we are still, uh, we are still in unbalanced. We don't know what's going to happen. It could be brought up any time, any day. It um, must be a horrible situation because I, I follow you on Twitter and I see, you know, every, every couple of weeks there's, you know, it's a flurry of activity. It's on the order paper. It could pass any day now, any hour now. Um, how is that to live under? How is that, like, that must be incredibly stressful to not know from day to day. Uh, uncertainty is very, very, very challenging, you know, because uh, I, I wouldn't say it's only about the bill, but it's only, it's about my life and yeah. about the life of other Ugandan activists. Because we're not only uncertain about the legislation itself, but we're very uncertain of what could happen to you as you leave your house in the morning to go and work or go and do anything you want to do. It could be a weekend, you're totally going to the beach and something could happen to you. Not an accident, but you could be attacked by people and beaten. And it's the same thing that is happening with the bill, because at some point we were saying, what if they just pass this bill and then we get over it and we deal with it? Because for us, uh, the bill hanging out in parliament is a big challenge, because many politicians uh, use it whenever they want for their advantage. Yeah. And for us, it is not good for, for, for us. And then the Ugandan uh, society, uh, the population, with this bill in parliament and appearing in the media all the time, it creates a lot more homophobia. So every time it comes up, it comes with levels of homophobia. Every time it is mentioned, it comes with different challenges for ordinary LGBT persons in Uganda. How has the international attention been on U Uganda? How has it affected um, what's been happening on the ground? And has that influenced the political pressures at all? Um, in the, over the, especially over the last couple of years with the, with the two movies that have come out. Um, has that changed anything? Well, um, I think it's two-sided. It's too uh, first, I would, like to, I would like to maybe look at the positive side, is that uh, in, in every movement, we need allies, we need friends, we need partners. And for us, the international pressure has created a lot of that. And also, in a way, it has created for us uh, positive media for the gay community in my country, uh, which we don't of often get in my own country. You know, you'll find it's in, in maybe a year or so, you get one balanced article on homosexuality. The rest is all negative. But getting uh, positive media from the international community, some of that media has bounced back to my country and created, you know, and at least appeared to be balanced. And also the other thing is that um, our politicians and our government have been concerned about the international community, you know, focusing a lot on LGBT issues. And for me, I would say that in our way it has created fear in them that this could be the movement, this could be the struggle that brings the world together. You know, this could be the struggle because every person has focused on the Ugandan struggle. And I think the fear inside them has made them rethink about the legislation, especially the bill in Uganda, and also at some point legitimize our work. Because before, we had leaders who would say there are no homosexuals in Uganda. The ones that are here are just being taught by the white people to be gay. And um, they're just wasting our time because of their immoral issues. They just want to have sex and flaunt it in public. But because of the international attention, because if you have respected politicians, you know, respected clergymen, respected um, human rights defenders or human rights organizations supporting and partnering with us, then our government cannot turn a blind, a blind eye to some of those people. They will say, if it is a concern for these people, I think it's a, a real concern for our nation as well. So in a way, it has been good. But also there have been some negative um, parts as well. Uh, for example, I'll begin, I'm, I'm, I'm in Toronto right now, and I will think I would, I would, I would start with the, what happened here. 
with uh, our Speaker of Parliament and the Prime Minister of Canada. Uh, John Baird. Yes. Yes, our Foreign Minister. Yes. And, and, and you know, that kind of approach, uh, you know, I, I, I understand where it comes from. Sometimes it's a passion that, you know, um, I, I could express it myself in that way. But also, uh, the way my speaker reacted was she was being very defensive. And we have said many times that we appreciate so much the international support, but it is very, very good when it is well thought and it is very good if it is done on a more diplomatic level. Because every person is going to be defensive mm. if you put them on the spot. Well, that was something that I heard uh, over and over again was that um, John Baird didn't approach Rebecca Kadaga in in and speak in an African way. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't discuss things on 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 a level that was cordial and that was polite yeah. for her. Um, maybe in Canada, in in our House of Commons, it's 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 okay to deal with yeah. with issues like that, but it's not yeah. in Uganda. Yes. Um, and so, I guess in terms of what Canada, how should Canada be dealing with this issue? How should Canada be be stepping in? How should we be helping? And and not just Canada, but other other nations as well. Yeah. Well, I think maybe uh, uh, to still continue on that, I still I think we understand the cultures, different cultures in different areas. Um, yeah, but I think the best um, the best way to to always support us is I think a lot of consultations with um, with us on the ground and also with um, people who work in Uganda. For example, the Canadian consulate in Uganda or in Nairobi, they would be well placed, you know, to inform you of what is happening in Uganda and how you can best respond because they deal with the issue every day. You know, Uganda is um, is a, a country that. Um, is very sometimes something can happen today and then something is totally different is happening the next day and if you came in Uganda you find people very friendly you could not even understand where the homophobia is coming from yeah so I think in a way it's very good to work with the people on the ground or the people who are involved on the issue and then we have also organizations here in, in Canada that are, are working with us that partner with us that are very blessed again to give uh, a very good um, uh, a very good information on how to respond. But I think the best way, again, is to engage on a more diplomatic level, because I think when you dialogue, you get to know, to get the views of the person you're talking to, and you know, understand where they're coming from, and what this, the issue is, and then you can try to also explain to them and talk to them, yeah, and, and maybe understand each other. Yeah. Okay. But when you do it in, I think the, the problem we have with um, public statements is that we get the problems, the people on the ground, because then we are scapegoated. I don't think it was a, a very big issue that my Speaker of Parliament reacted that way, but maybe she, she had her own you know, political agenda and to use that as a platform to express this political agenda, or she wanted to you know, find uh, publicity or popularity, and this was the best opportunity. So sometimes we shouldn't give people such levels of opportunity, you know. Yeah. That's a good point. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you. It was you. great meeting you. Thank you too.